So this is the Unit 13 seminar on the ambiguous case. Uh, as we mentioned before, the word ambiguous means vague, unclear. And for most of the unit guide, you are not going to be given triangles. You have to draw your own triangles. For the very beginning, um, it's actually a review of the concepts from your Unit 16 guide in Grade 10. That was last year. Uh, in the last trigonom trigonometric unit, we were dealing with right angle triangles. And now we're moving on to acute triangles. And for the ambiguous case, we'll be working with obtuse triangles as well. Can someone tell me what does the term acute refer to, or acute triangle? What does that mean? Yep. Great. So all the angles in the triangle are less than 90 degrees. So there is no 90 degree angle. Everything is less than 90 degrees. Um, when last year you reviewed that when you were working with uh, acute triangles, there is no sine, cos, tan, no opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. The first thing I want to review with you is how to label the triangle now when you're working with acute triangles. Ay, ay, ay. So first of all, we're going to, if this is my angle, big angle A, my big angle B, and my big angle C, we're going to label the sides according to uh, the angle that is opposite to it. So, for example, big angle A, side small A is opposite to big angle A. Side C is opposite to big angle C. And side B is opposite to big angle B. So that's how we na label the triangles from now on. No more opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Also, in terms of your sine law and formulas and your cosine formulas, these are all in your textbook. You don't have to write them down. The sine law formula is very simple. It's either the side length over the angle, A over sine A, is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. That's the easier formula to memorize. You will have to memorize all these formulas for the test. Um, and you can use these formulas to solve for angles as well as sides. Now, I'm not going to do specific examples using the sine law and the cosine law. I may do a pen cast later on because this is all review. And these formulas are going to be incorporated when we do the ambiguous case, usually the sine law formula specifically. But you will get lots of practice uh, with these two concepts during um, the first part of your unit guide. Very, very straightforward. And we will be practicing the sign law on a regular basis uh, when we're doing our ambiguous case problems. The problems for ambiguous case are quite long, so make sure you have lots of paper to take notes, OK? It's a, it's a major multi-step process. One thing you do have to memorize, though, is when to use the sine law and when to use the cosine law. No one is going to tell you in MCR 3U on your test, use the sine law now, use the cosine law now. You have to memorize the four different scenarios, and you have to know when to apply either formula. So first one, um, for sine law, whenever you have two angles, and any side, that's one situation where you have to use the sine law. And the second situation is when you have two sides and the opposite angle. So what, do I, what I mean by that, if I knew that this was 10 and the next side right next to it was 12, and I knew the value maybe of this angle. So I have side, side, angle. Then I know to use the sine law. OK, so that is uh, kind of like a little mnemonic of device to help you figure out that situation. For the cosine law, it's very simple to memorize the two situations. You use the cosine law 
Uh, first of all, when you have three side lengths, side, 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 and then you have to solve for the angles. Now, why don't you move over there so you're not facing my back? You can see. Go move, sit over there next to Nicholas. Seriously, no, you're distracting, or you're getting distracted. And the next case is when we have side, angle, side. Another way of saying this is two sides and the contained angle. Okay, so if I look at this triangle again, if I know these, the value of these two sides, maybe 10 and 9, and what I mean by contained angle is the angle that is connecting those two sides. So maybe this is 28 degrees. So I have two sides and the angle that's connecting those two sides. It's called the contained angle. Then you have to use the cosine law to solve. Does everyone understand that? It might be vaguely familiar from last year. But that's going to be the first part of your test. The majority of your test is going to be on the ambiguous case. So let's move on from this. Okay, so I want you to copy all the details that are on the slide because this is a hard problem to tackle and there's a lot of different steps that we have to follow. So the definition of the ambiguous case, when you're given a side angle pair, so that means the angle, the side, side A, and the corresponding angle that goes with it. So remember, the angle that's opposite from the side. You're given that. Plus, you're given another side value. We're going to call that side B. So you're going to be given the name of the entire triangle, but more specifically, the value of A, the value of angle A, and the value of one other side. And you will not be given a diagram. You are going to be expected to draw the triangle on your own. That's why I gave you that little review sheet, so you will know how to use the triangle. So the ambiguous case is special because there may be two triangles that satisfy the given information. You can have two triangles, up to two triangles, or the information provided may not form a triangle at all. You might have a situation where there's no solution because no triangle can be formed. So it's easy to say all of this, but a different thing to visualize it. So I'll give you a second to copy that. So your unit guide might look a little scary for unit 13. This is a seminar that might, it might be necessary to watch more than once because there are so many different steps. And you have to memorize all these steps for your test, okay? So let's move on to the uh, next slide. Okay, so I'm going to explain this. Uh, we're going to have different scenarios. Uh, first of all, a triangle cannot be, might, might not be possible. So your very first step, you are given your side length A and your side length B. So step one, I want you to write this down, is to check, is A greater than B? Question mark. Is A greater than B? This is the very first thing you have to do. If the answer is yes, that means I'm going to draw a little stop sign, color it in. No, let's not color it in. <laughs> so this means stop. If the answer is yes, you are going to stop because that means that only one triangle can be formed. So your answer is going to have one triangle, so you can stop. If the answer is no, we're going to proceed to step two. So you're trying to figure out, is one side length greater than the other? If that side length is greater than B, we're going to have one triangle. And we're going to go to the chart you were copying down earlier. So A is greater than B. One triangle is going to be formed. Your A is side is going to be the longer side. B is going to be the shorter side. 
And what we have is one triangle, but two right angle triangles stuck together.